Right, today I'm gonna to show you how to customize your Shopify analytics dashboard. So you can set it up like I have here and give you the best metrics to be able to monitor to gauge the health of your marketing efforts on a weekly basis. So the default Shopify dashboard layout is not very good, especially since they've introduced this new one. So for all the client accounts I work on, I will basically go in and customize it and set it up like so to give me all the, the good stuff that I wanna be looking at each and every week coming into Shopify. So this is gonna be a step-by-step. -step. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do and yeah, you're just gonna have to follow along and build it yourself. So the first thing you're gonna do is we need to make some custom reports because some of these metrics like this one, add to cart, return customers, uh, and some, some more are not there as default in the, in the dashboard, analytics dashboard. So you have to make the reports and then pull them through. So I'm gonna show you everything, don't worry, but let's go in and make those reports to kick off with. So the first report you're going to want to create is going to be this one. So you're going to come into, well, not create this one, but you want to come into this one, total sales over time, which is a default Shopify report. And this is just normal Shopify, but I'm pretty sure in Shopify Plus, the name is the same, total sales over time. It, they used to be different, but yeah, I think it's the exact same name. Um, I've not checked one of the client accounts before this, but I'm pretty sure it's the same name now that they've standardized it, okay? And the other thing you can do, which you couldn't do before in the normal Shopify, is you can save reports like you could do in Shopify Plus. So if you've not updated to the new reports layout yet, where you have this side column of metrics, visualization, dimensions, blah, 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 definitely just upgrade it because it's gonna change at some point anyway. So you may as well have it ready and set up. Um, and also you can follow along with this video easier. So we're in total sales over time. And what you wanna do is you wanna come up to orders and double click on orders. What that's gonna do is it's now gonna have a blue check on it before the blue check was done at total sales. It's now gonna be on orders and this dashboard here is gonna to change to orders and it's whatever is here that's pulled through onto the analytics dashboard. So that's why we're doing that. And then one th more thing we need to do in this report is we wanna come down to visualize it, um, filters, sorry. We wanna do the plus sign and you wanna look for new or returning customer, this one here, new or returning customer. And then scroll down, now that it's in a filter, you wanna say new or returning customer is, select the value as returning. Okay, so apply that. And we're then going to save as, and give this a name. So let's do YouTube and return and then customers. Okay. Uh, yeah, or I was gonna say return customers, and then save copy. So we do wanna look at new customers and all customers, but those are metrics that are in the dashboard section as default, so we don't need to create reports for them, okay? So come back into reports now, that's one report created. The next one you wanna go into is the conversion rate breakdown, and you wanna click on sessions with cart first of all double click there and in this one we want to change the visualization so where it says simple horizontal let's change that to list by metric and same thing come up to save as we don't need to do any filters on this one you're going to call this one added to cart okay so save copy now we're gonna double click on sessions that reach checkout. So double click there. And this time don't click save because you will just overwrite what you've done with the add to cart. You wanna click save as new. Delete this part at the start. And this one, you can call it reach checkout, initiate checkout, or just checkouts, I guess, whatever, whatever you want to write. Oh man, initiated, okay. Save copy. And then one final report we need to make, double click on sessions that converted. Again, save as new. And we're gonna call this one completed checkouts. I mean, that doesn't make sense. It should be checkout, but who cares? Okay, so that's all of our reports made. So we've got completed checkout, initiated checkout, add to cart, and then return customers. So let's go back into the dashboard in analytics. 
and you're going to come up to the top and click on customize okay so if you set this up and you want to get rid of it all you have to do is click on this reset to default and it'll go back to the original one so even if you're not sure about this you can have a play with it and if you don't want to use it don't use it but this is the metrics you want to be looking at so i would advise you look at it okay so i'm going to come and remove all of these uh let's just get the best way of doing this yeah there we go remove all these i'm going to start with blank canvas so you can follow along completely with what I'm doing. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is total sales over time in this search bar. So let's put in total sales over time. Then we're gonna look at AOV, so average. Uh, average order value over time. Then we're gonna look at orders. Over time. And then we will look at new customer orders. So new customer orders over time. Take that one. And let's just adjust the size of some of these. Um, Let's grab the AOV. So you've got total sales over time, average order value, and then you wanna make orders over time as small as possible. Same as new customer orders, because we just care about the metric. Okay, so that's those ones. And then I want to add one of our custom ones or two of our custom ones. So we're gonna type in add to cart. There you go, YouTube add to cart, it's been pulled through. Put that down here. Uh, we can make these smaller actually. And the other one was the return customers. So just type in return. There you go, YouTube return customers. Make it as small as possible and pop it in the corner, okay? So that's probably the things I look at the most. These give me the quick snapshot of how the brands are doing. But there's some more things I want to add, of course. So we wanna add gross sales because total sales includes discounts or returns, sorry. And if someone returns something, it, like a, if there's a big return or like a lot of returns in a given week, it's gonna make your total sales come right down. But that's not a good ca um, measure of how your marketing performance is doing. So we wanna look at gross sales as well because that's really a true test to the marketing efforts. That's not affected by other sides of the business, the operation side, okay? So yes, um, have this bigger because I like to use this as a graph. So we're gonna have gross sales over time as a graph. We're then going to look for sessions because we'll look at sessions over time as well. Uh, yeah, where is it? Sessions over time. Okay, and we can probably put these a little bit smaller. And the last one would be new customer sales over time. So why I'm doing these three is that these are three I like to look at as trends. So I wanna have them big enough to see the graph and I will look at how the, you know, I might filter it month over month or something, year over year, and look at how, how we're trending on these things. So I've not taught you about stuff like sessions, but this is something I look at quite a lot. And I will be teaching you more this year how you use that uh, effectively in your Facebook ads, okay? So that's those, then we look at total sales by channel. Sale, total sales by channel, let's see. Um, there we go, total sales by channel. Okay, and we will look at total sales by product. So let's get total sales by product, total sales by product, and then sales attributed to marketing. Okay, pop that in. And we're gonna pull these two down to make them larger, cause this is a simple business, you know, this is my brand, it's, it's not doing very big numbers. But in client accounts that are doing big numbers have lots of SKUs, Something like total sales by product is something important. You want to know what is, 
your top selling product lines? How have they improved week over week? You always want to be monitoring them mm -hmm. as well as sales attributed to marketing. You know, when you're doing different marketing channels, this just has meta and email. But when you've got other channels, this is very useful looking at what, where the, where the sales are coming in and Google as well. You know, they're coming in from your, your brand stuff. Is it shopping campaigns? That kind of stuff is very helpful. Okay. Or if you do like proper email campaigns for like specific things, you can, you can see they're doing well here. Anyway, that's those two. Then we want to look at conversion rate. Okay. So conversion rate over time, conversion rate over time, take that one. Same thing with the channel breakdown, you know, there's nothing much to see here, but I have it larger because when you do have bigger clients or bigger brands that have different sales channels and even B2B stuff that comes in as draft orders, you wanna be able to see that, okay? So bring this down, conversion rate. Then we've got some of our custom ones. So we're gonna add the uh, the checkout. So the checkout reached, first of all. The checkout completed. And we could maybe make this one smaller. Yeah, I think I'll make this one bigger. Okay, and that can be one smaller. And yeah, so basically how I look at it, I'll look at add to cart if I need to. So I'll look at, you know, new customer orders, how are they, how's the return customer, you know, how's our retention. If we're having like a quiet week, but I think people are showing intent, they're just not converting for whatever reason, add to cart can be a good gauge of that. Okay, people are still adding to cart, they're just not converting. But if I want to see further bottlenecks or things in the funnel, or if we change something at the car and we want to measure the success of that, you can look at reach checkout and completed checkout very, very easily in the section to see any improvements or any drop-offs in them week over week, okay? So that's those ones. Then we're going to look at sessions by landing page. And this one is very useful if you are if you have different landing pages you're sending stuff to or you have like different campaigns with um, different products in each campaign. So we've got sessions by location and then sessions by device type as well. So that's those, we can make these a bit smaller, you know, maybe this size because you have a scroll feature in this one and this I don't really look at session by location too much, but it's just a bit of extra information you could have. So that's those. And then we've got session by referrer comes below it. Okay, pop that in. Um, total sales by referrer. So total sales by referrer. And these ones I'm going to put like halfway across. Like this, you can see a breakdown where they run across the thing. Um, total sales by referrer. And then finally, we're going to add two more. So new versus New versus returning customers over time. Yep, there we go. And this can come across, this is gonna be quite big. To look at the graph, probably maybe that size. And then finally, we'll look at return customer rate. Okay, so return customer Nope. Um, sorry, returning customer rate over time. Okay, so returning customer rate over time, pop that one down. And then all you would simply do is you would hit save. Okay, so I'm not, not, I'm not gonna hit save because I, I've done these YouTube reports for the video, but I have my own one set up already. 
but that's all you do, set it up. And like I said, over the course of this next year, I'm gonna teach you how, I'm gonna teach you more about how I actually use these metrics week over week to manage your ad campaigns, both on Meta and on Google and on everything else, just to gauge how your marketing's doing, high level looking in Shopify, okay? So if you like the video, give me a subscribe, keep watching, coming back. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. But until the next one, thanks for watching and see you very, very soon.